So uh, if you guys don't know, Adobe has been taking in a lot of poop. It's because of uh, they put it in this new thing of t uh, in, in their TOS saying that they can actually um, potentially use your art in there uh, and to make their AI generative stuff bigger. Right. So uh, let's I I'm not sure how I feel about that. But the thing is, uh, as an artist, this is really, really bad. And I even talked to my art director at work and uh, he said that we have to wait until to see what Disney thinks. Wait, we have to see what Disney actually thinks. And what Disney will be the one who's going to be uh, who will let Adobe know whether or not this is good or bad. So this comes to us from Legal Mindset. Shout out to Legal Mindset. Uh, we had um, uh, we, we got an invite from uh, Andrew, Legal Mindset, to go on to his, uh, his stream. And uh, we were actually talking a whole bunch of JRPG stuff. Yeah, Andrew was awesome. Maybe you guys haven't read this, so go ahead and subscribe to, subscribe to him and stuff like that. He has a lot of good takes. And plus, let's see what he has to say. Uh, lawyers reviews complaint about um, business, uh, business tactics with uh, Adobe. Exploitative business tactics. Let's see. Well, we've gotten to the next segment, which is something that you guys brought up for me and you guys had me cover, which was Adobe. This is something that was actually previously requested and I called it. I said, we are gonna get action on this at a national level. All right. And we got it, we got it here. And I did not expect it to come from the US DOJ. Now, I wish the US DOJ would do stuff like suing over these, um, over these uh, DEI companies. But <laughs> I will take what well, can only hope company. now we're going to skim some of it. We're not going to do it. And ironically, we're reading the Adobe lawsuit using an Adobe product. This is like the Adobe reader plugin. So it's actually <laughs> kind of hilarious that we're reviewing the Adobe with Adobe, right? But the USDO, ironic, the civil protection division has filed a lawsuit, the United States of America versus Adobe. Holy How crap. Wrecked. Can you get this? Is absolutely nuts. Damn, it's not just a company, but the United States, the entire United States is going after Adobe. Good, Adobe is going to lose 100% because government companies uses uses Adobe products too. Whether or not it's um, it's a, it's a Photoshop, you're also using editors like uh, Premiere, After Effects. They're using logos. A lot of people, a lot of companies use Illustrator to make logos. A lot of companies use uh, Animate slash Flash to make animation. I use almost all of these products. I use uh, fo I use Photoshop. I use Illustrator. I use uh, After Effects. I use uh, um, I use Adobe Acrobat. I use Premiere. I use Animate slash Flash. I use all of that, and and I'm subscribed to it. So I'm like, what the what the actual fuck is happening? So. The fact that the U.S. DOJ is going after them, this is freaking huge. Let's see what uh, Andrew has to say about this, man. This, day, this, Let's see. F around and find out, bro. F around and find out. So what do they got here? The U.S. United States of America acting on referral of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Like I said, they're going to get regulatory oversight. And this is the body that always does the regulatory oversight. So you got to understand, like, this is going to happen. Adobe is one of the largest software companies that make applications such as Acrobat, Photoshop, and Illustrator. They offer subscription plans to those and dozens of products on Adobe.com. For years, Adobe has harmed customers by enrolling them in its default most lucrative subscription plan without clearly disclosing important plan details. Guys? Now, here's the thing, okay? Back in high school and early college, in order for you to buy the Adobe Creative Suite, that's what it used to be called before, Creative Suite, it's about, it's, a, it's several thousands of dollars. It's, it, um, no kids can actually afford it. No, no person in, in high school, college can afford it. It's really fucking expensive. So do you know what did we do? We pirated the shit out of it, man. We, I would go on to a bunch of these like sites. I will pirate the shit out of it and we'll get a cracked version. You basically need to go inside and delete some kind of like a file. And the actual like um, you, you basically turn off your internet, install it, go inside, replace a certain file and overwrite that file with a file that you also get from the install. And that's how I was able to use Photoshop because it's freaking expensive. Now, you cannot get 
the creative like CS6, CS7. That's called that, that's that's what I use. I think I started with CS4, CS4 or CS3. And uh, I used that for a long time. And then all of a sudden they stopped doing that. And then it's like, oh, since we know a lot of people pirate it, what we're going to do is do a payment plan. You subscribe to us for 50, 50 to $60 a month and you can get the entire suite, right? And I've been subscribed for what, five, six, seven years now, which is, which is crazy. Yeah, CS6 and CS7 is cloud-based. Yeah, this, this, is, this is crazy, man. Yeah, when I, in, when I was in animation before subscription, they used to tell software come independently to, on DVDs. Yeah, this, 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 is so, this is so crazy. And now you're adding these crazy TOS into your things. Like, yeah, we're going to steal your shit. It's like, are you serious? This is exactly what I said. This is precisely what I said. They didn't disclose anything. Yeah, they just did it. And now they're being fucking wrecked for it. They failed to disclose by signing up for its annual paid monthly subscription. They're agreeing to a year-long commitment with a hefty early termination fee. And they only disclose the ETF when subscribers attempt to cancel, turning the stealth and ETF into a powerful retention tool by trapping customers and subscriptions they no longer want. Bro, they fucking got this is dead to rights. They're so screwed. During enrollment, they hide I love material it. terms. This is the word here, material, right? Material, that means substantial. That means terms that matter, not bullshit terms, not other crap. This is important terms in fine print and behind optional text box and hyperlinks. This is what I'm saying, guys. A lot of these companies are going to get in trouble for trying to hide bullshit in their TOS. Mm -hmm. So remember, when I go through these TOS and I say, hey, they're really trying to hide this, or this is really buried, or this is something they don't really talk about. This is going to come up. Yeah, that, that shit's illegal. This is going to come up in these lawsuits, and it's going to come up again and again. Yeah. That's just illegal. Uh, some points are redacted because it's the U.S. Um, it's the U.S. government, so there's probably certain stuff that it, they consider um, classified or confidential or whatever else. So they redacted it in their complaint, right? The government they redacted it. You'll see it when it goes to trial and when it comes out, but for now, it's it's uh, redacted. Right. Um, so Adobe then deters cancellations by employing an onerous and complicated cancellation process. As part of this convoluted process, Adobe ambushes subscribers with a previously obscured ETF when they attempt to cancel. Through that, they violated specific laws. So what this probably is, guys, four and five, are probably talking about witnesses that know about that or CIs, confidential informants, right? That's probably what's in here. They probably have facts that are part of that information that's blocked out. Okay. So they're suing in federal court. Good. Federal court. They're going to sue in the San Jose division. So they're taking it to Cali, which yes. has strong consumer protections because uh, Adobe has its principal place of business there. But beyond that, they're, they're probably, it's not looking good there. So this is something. Now here's the thing. Every single company that's in entertainment, video games, animation tech every single company uses some so, some kind of adobe suite whether or not is is uh, what's it called again uh photoshop illustrator uh premiere what have you right i know some people are like oh um I, I know cartoon network they use premiere but they also use final cut pro i know that for editing a lot of people they don't use um they don't use uh, what's it called after effects they use um they use nuke right and but the thing is that in terms of actual like character designs and stuff like that character designs any type of illustrations is photoshop photoshop is the main main program right we even like at my work we have a slack channel and we talk about it there's people who are like are like should we be concerned about this and then even like some of the um, uh, art directors for like the um, for the ui side i guess this is very very concerning and i asked like i said i asked my art director so what we're we gonna do like like what about our work stuff you know like is like he said that work might be a little different, but we're gonna, we're gonna let Disney. Disney is gonna, gonna be the one who's gonna go bat for us, right? But the thing is, is, this is not Disney v Adobe. This is not the animation Ayatsi Guild versus Adobe. This is United States of America against Adobe. Man, you got you know you even got undocumented immigrants. You got illegal immigrants against Adobe.
it's yeah they yeah they, they, they're they're screwed adobe is screwed they have to rectify this they have to change the shit or adobe might actually go under right they have to they have to change it i'm not sure what's gonna happen they're gonna sue them uh, they might settle adobe must might lose a lot of money will they make it for free for two years i don't know grum posted a list of alt programs but here's the thing though you can post a bunch of alt programs but a lot of people won't or it's going to be hard for them to, to, to sort of transition or migrate their day-to-day -day work to a different thing. So let's say if I go to like, um, I don't know, Clip Studio or um, uh, what's it called? Procreate, right? It's different. Like the, the amount of tools that Photoshop has compared to uh, Procreate is massive. It's, you can't even compare how great Photoshop is. Like if you're doing like daily sketches, like uh, you know, a, a quick panel, a quick idea. You're you're going on a bus and you're drawing something. I'm not saying you can't make something fantastic on Procreate. I've seen stuff like that before, but in terms of like the actual tools that comes with Adobe, that comes with Photoshop, it's um, it's in, it's insane. Adobe might be too big to fail. Here's the thing, though: Are they bigger than the U United States? Are they bigger than the U.S.? Right? They they have to settle. They will have to settle, but I don't, I don't know. We're only five minutes into this, uh, and I'm basically blabbering. Let's see what Andrew has to say. Object to the FTC Act, they're suing under the FTC Act, as well as under the Restore Online Shoppers Confidence Act, or ROSCA. ROSCA. Uh, Adobe is a defendant. Uh, one of the people that is um, being sued as well is Man, uh, <laughs> Maninder Swani, the Senior Vice President of the Digital To Go Marketing. So he's under a uh, suit, as well as David uh, Wad Wadhwani, who's the director, who's of uh, the uh, president of digital media business at Adobe, right? And now you've got the Restore Online Confidence Act. So what does that do? It says that consumer confidence is important to the growth of online commerce. To continue its development as a marketplace, the internet must provide consumers with clear and accurate information and give sellers the opportunity to complete compete with others for a consumer business. This is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Internet companies have gotten away with this bullshit for a while, but they're not going to get away with it forever. Eventually, they are going to be regulated, and they will be pushed. Just because in-person brick and mortar has been the target for decades and decades and decades doesn't mean that these internet companies are going to get away with what they're doing forever. And what they call this is generally prohibited uh, charging customers for goods through a negative option feature, hmm? which is uh, unless the <laughs> seller clearly and conspicuously discloses all material terms and obtains their express consent before making the charge and provides simple mechanisms to stop recurring charges. A negative option feature is an, option, an offer or agreement to sell or provide any good or service under which the customer's silence or failure to take affirmative action to reject goods or services or cancel the agreement is interpreted as acceptance of the offer. All right. So it's an unfair and deceptive practice or act yes. affirming commerce. So this is uh, the statute that they're going to say, hey. And, and the thing is, as part of their new TOS, right, you can't opt out of it and continue to use their stuff. It's because from what I gather, Overall, it's basically they're saying that we can use your stuff. If you use Creative Cloud, whatever you do in any program, we basically can, you know, use AI to monitor what you do and potentially use that for what they, whatever they need to use, use it for. So it's it's very, it's very, it's worded in, in a way saying that they might use your stuff, but they might not use your stuff, right? Right, and more like people uh, get people to do AI at purpose and higher jobs. So what they're doing is that they have Photoshop has this thing called generative fill, and generative fill you can use that. It's basically Adobe's own version of AI that you can type in a prompt. The of course the more the more stuff you type in, the more accurate it, it gets. It basically becomes a tool that this, this a generative AI that photo uh not photoshop but like just adobe has can use to study your art and make their generative ai better so the more you use their stuff the better the better their stuff gets and that will potentially put jobs you know uh put, put people's jobs at risk but the thing is this is just photoshop that i'm talking about what about everything else that they use so that's the part that 
Like, how, what about if you're just typing up a document on Acrobat? Like, that shit, like, if the government uses Adobe Acrobat, that means that everything that's, you know, can, can be potentially classified will be, can be ascertained by Adobe through their AI. And you can't, if you hit no to their TOS, you can't use their stuff. So that's, that's pretty, it's pretty fucked up. It's invalid under under this particular business model, which is a subscription model. So they go through here, the subscription model, and their subscription model made them 7.71 billion in, 19, in uh, 2019. And Damn. And they 14.22 billion of their 19 billion. This is their cash cow. Damn. This is their cash cow. You see why they get so crazy about it. This is making over two thirds of their revenue. I don't math so good, but this is, I mean, that's probably more than that. Calculator this real quick. Let me calculate this real quick. It's your boy calculator. So this is the name was, so, so let's see, uh, 14. Andrews in calculator is fine. fine. Uh, divided by, let's see, let's see what we got here. 73%, 73.2%, mm -hmm. 70, almost 75% of the revenue, almost 75%. Bro, that's nuts. That's, that's absolutely nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's because they are charging automatically monthly. Mm -hmm. If they cancel before the end of the year, it's subject to the ETF. And they calculate the ETF as 50% of any remaining contract obligation. That is nuts. Mm -hmm. And if you cancel before the end of the year, you lose service at the end of the month during which you cancel. So you're not even getting, you're not even getting what you're paying for yeah, as fucked. part of the ETF. You should, if you're going to pay an ETF, you should get service for the rest of the year. So, uh, consumers subscribe to Adobe products by using a computer or smart device to enroll. Well, we all know that. I'm not going to explain how you buy Adobe. That's kind of obvious, right? So here's the unlawful All right, let's see it. Flow. Let's so see on it. the plan selection page here, here's how you select it. Oh, look, we're going to pay $54.99. Yeah, it's not cheap. Please apply if you cancel after 40 days. I right, right? Let me tell you about the fees. So they tell you, okay, oh, it's it's... 54 a month. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. That's fine. Look, oh, we're going to get we're gonna <laughs> a full, we're going to get a full plan here. Right. Fees apply. Well, when you navigate down, right, it says, if you cancel after 14 days, your service will continue until the end of the month's billing period. And you will be charged an early termination. Fee. How much is that? Right. If I get terminated, how much is that? concrete information about the amount of the ETF. The issue is when you hover over, you are not told how much you're going to be yeah. and how ridiculous this charge is. It does not state anywhere that they require a one year commitment. Where does it say that here? Yeah, Where because it, it, say it says you monthly committed for one year, not even in the tooltip. It doesn't say anywhere that you're committed for one year they just make that shit up yeah that's that that's fucked it does not disclose at all the fee that will be charged for yeah the, the the thing is that if you when you scroll back up you actually see you actually see you can subscribe monthly 54.99 or you can buy the entire year out and it'll save you money now if you buy the entire year like you pay the entire year for you to save money yeah i can see that if you cancel it you'll get like a you know you know you know, termination fee of a year or whatever that bullshit is, but you're doing it. A lot of people will just do it monthly. And that's where it fucks you. It's freaking insane. And I know a lot of people canceled already too. Early, early uh, cancellation. So that goes back to here, the flow. When you're purchasing it, here's the purchase page. Nothing is disclosed to you. Nothing is disclosed to you. All it says is, oh, it's going to automatically renew, but it doesn't talk about that at all and look at it no annual commitment required after the first year well does that that implies there's an annual commitment the first year but it doesn't tell you that there's an annual commitment the first year Jeez. right see this says right here cancel no annual commitment required after the first year it implies it but it doesn't tell you what it is it doesn't tell you the scope of that at all They're only two monthly though so there's one is no 30 more yeah explicit link to the chart Crazy. that violates the statute according to the DOJ. Right. And, and look, I have some 
pretty fair confidence in this because the DOJ would not bring this type of complaint, would not make this assertion, unless that's how the statute worked. Mm -hmm. Adobe defendants know about profit and consumer confusion regarding the APO. So their enrollment has generated frequent complaints to the BBB, Better Business Bureau. Guys, Damn. this is why I say you need to complain. You need to submit this because when there is proof, like for example, complaints to the BBB, that can be used in court against these. I companies. wonder if there's gonna there's so gonna be an, to a class action lawsuit against Adobe against these companies when they're pulling bullshit. This is why it matters. This is why these maybe I can get back like two dollars. And why you should be submitting these complaints also through their own community support web pages and on social media. All of this is being used as evidence against them. That's why you need to do all of it. Fuck them. No, because I'm some still people, using it, but fuck them. People don't do that already. No, no, actually, they don't because they think it doesn't matter. A lot of people do not write a complaint because they're like, oh, I just give up. No, don't give up. Fight back. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing um, you have to put a complaints in. Right. Whenever a video game is bad, whenever a movie is bad, whenever um, something that you were promised and then they turn around and fucked you is bad. Sort of like Hell Divers. Right. Hell Divers is a really good one. So there isn't a really a good way to go to complain is because what happens if you go to their Discord complain, you automatically just get banned. Right. So what they started to do instead of they complain through reviews using Steam and then they went. Uh, ne they went from pi in a po uh, highly positive to uh, to like overwhelmingly negative within like hours or maybe even days. So that's how you complain. Always, always, always complain. Just because you, if if you feel like, oh man, I'm such, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a fucking sand in the dirt. You know, I'm, a, I'm just a fucking drop in the ocean. No, no, it's you need to complain no matter what. It's because if you feel like you're feeling this, someone else in the world is feeling the same way. It doesn't matter. So um, if one person sees it, a million person sees it. So if you complain, the more you complain, the better it is, right? There should be a class action lawsuit. Yeah, there absolutely, absolutely should be. Everyone that was subject to this, I believe it's July 1st is going, in, is going into effect. I believe July 1st, right? And people got to passive complain. Oh, yeah, always complain. Always complain. ABC, always be complaining. Customers are confused about the terms of the APM and the one-year commitment. So they've got proof of that. Okay, so this is all evidence of his Damn. personal supervision. So there's probably somebody inside the company Damn. that, uh, like a CI, confidential informant. That's a lot of redacted. Them there. So these sections are kind of uh, covered in terms of the personal involvement of the two executives. So we'll skip past those. That's a lot uh, of redacted for sure. These unlawful cancellation practices. So they generally provide them with two primary options to cancel, online self-cancellation and contacting customer service. It does not automatically cancel. They should provide an option where it automatically cancels unless you affirmatively act to keep it in place. That's a problem. Self-cancellation. The, the flow there uh, has a lot of requirements, right? There's no way to dispute the charge using a self-cancellation flow. So there's no way to dispute the ETF charge, the early termination fund. You cannot dispute it. You cannot challenge it. You can't speak to somebody if you self-cancel. The yeah. only way you can do it is by calling customer service. See, well, here's the thing. If you call customer service, like, hello, thank you for calling uh, Adobe. My name is Tom. How can I help you? Oh, uh, you want to complain? Okay, let me, uh, let, let, let me get someone else on the phone. Hello, my name is Tom. Thank you for calling customer service complaint department. How can I help you? That's basically Adobe's thing, right? They basically put one person in the complaint department and have him do everything. Everything. That's why it takes so long for you to get to the complaint. It's just a little circle jerking. Yeah, man. Jeez. Jeez. Well, if you call customer service, you're still impeded right? Subscribers have their calls or chats dropped or disconnected. Subscribers have transferred uh, to one or more Adobe reps during their call or chat, forcing them to encounter delays, re-explain themselves and request it. Yes. And this is what these companies do. They know that's yep. what you have to do. That's why these subscriptions can be really, really a pain in the ass. 
Yep. Uh, many subscribers who insist on canceling and kind of resistance and delay from the reps. Many subscribers having to cancel by phone have been subjected to time caught consuming and burdensome process. It takes forever, man. Right? They provide no refunds or partial refunds to some subscribers who incur charges after a attempted unsuccessful cancellation. So the cancellation process itself is problematic. They know there's problems with that. They're not willing to do. So here, so here's the thing. You know, whenever you like you, you're at a bank, and then like, oh, or no, okay. A good example is let's say you're at the gym, and you're like at 24 hour fitness, and you want to go cancel, right? You go over there, and he's like, hey, how's it? How's everything? How can I help you? I would like to cancel my membership. He's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure you want to cancel? Yes, I want to cancel. But the thing is that like, you're going to miss out on a bunch of these deals, you know? Are you sure? He's like, yeah, I want to cancel. And they bring out the hottest girl and they'll be like, are you sure you want to cancel? You are you sure you, you're 24 hour fitness, you can come 24 hours. Are you sure you want to cancel? Extremely hot Indian guy. And then you try to, it's, they make it so annoying to cancel. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. W whatever. Whatever. Jeez. Uh, all of that. And beyond that, they know the regulation. So these people have attorneys, just like uh, the companies I represent. They have attorneys that are in-house. They have extensive legal resources, including in-house and outside counsel. I worked as compliance counsel. I knew about this shit. I know about Rosca, right? The fact that they don't know about that, they have no excuse. They have zero excuse. Yeah, Adobe and its executives were aware of significant government and regulatory scrutiny regarding this process, including the civil investigation demand the FTC issued to Adobe in 2022. So they were well aware of this. They've nevertheless persisted until the comment until the they did it anyways. It shows pieces how of, pieces of shit they are. So failure to clearly and conspicuously disclose material terms. That's a violation of Rosca. That's count one. So this is the one count against everybody, both the company and the individuals. Get them out. Count two, failure to obtain expressed informed consent. You need to have expressed informed consent, particularly before charging your credit card, bank card, or other financial account. Guys, this is probably something that other companies are doing. Yeah, that other companies are doing. So this is something I want to see other companies get destroyed. Yeah, over. I, 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 I gotta three, be able to check my Pornhub account. Simple cancellation, something they should do, but they're not doing it, and that's a violation of the statute. And of course, the fact this is ongoing conduct, they knew about it, and they're continuing to do it. So they're asking the court to stop all of this, to halt these violations, to issue injunctions to stop them from doing this <laughs> and to address the injuries, award civil penalties, right? And um, find that they violated these statutes. The one in thing, the thing that might happen right here is a temporary injunction. I would love to see a temporary injunction stopping yes. the ETF, the early termination fee, in, while this is pending. That would be a big thing. And if that comes down the pike, I will indeed cover that. All right, cool. That's awesome. I, I I definitely want to see more. I want to see Andrew cover this. I think, in, in my opinion, all the law tubers that I follow, like he's he's my favorite one. I follow all his stuff. I remember with the whole like uh, Nick Ricada stuff that happened. Like out of every, he's most unbiased. Like he, he go, goes it goes with like he he he's fantastic. Like go 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 ahead and go. I'm gonna share the link over here. Go, I'm gonna like this video right over here. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and uh, give Andrew a uh, legal mindset a follow. I love that guy. I know Gray was able to hang out with him when he was in Manila. So that's actually pretty damn cool. So yeah, um, we're gonna see if we try to get him on a uh, Project Agro, but yeah, man. Uh re re really good. Um I I'm glad he broke it down because uh I'm a dumbass and uh I'm pretty sure that uh Andrew uh is way smarter than I am. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit smarter in math, but he's probably way better. At, at, then all these counseling legal stuff that yeah it's it's yeah adobe needs to like come out with some kind of like statement soon is because I, I believe their shit starts in july 1st if i'm not mistaken and uh yeah it's gonna affect millions of people who use adobe products it's gonna be insane